happy uh, that you're here. We've got exciting plans for Ericsson. Uh, we've got a, a team up here that represents uh, cross-sectionally uh, some folks that have gotten us to where we are today and some other folks uh, that will combine with those folks to get us to where we want to go tomorrow. Number one, we aim to uh, extend uh, the, the progress we've already made with this great aircraft behind me uh, and expand into other areas. Uh, most notably, our Air Crane Incident Response System, called AIRS, AIRS for short. So we have some great features that are essentially bolt-on that allow an expanded level of, uh, of, of authority for this uh, aircraft, number one. Number two, we think the timing is right for the next generation of the 64, modernization, if you will, of the 64. We have a basic aircraft that uh, some 40 years ago Igor Sikorsky uh, came up with and he did a good job, he was just way ahead of his time. So we get feedback about what we can do to this aircraft. And there are some things that we can do to this aircraft that we think our customers are number one, wanting, but number two, willing to pay for. So that's the OEM side of things. MRO side of things. We think that capability that I talked about earlier can be expanded. Can be expanded into other platforms, but can also be expanded to our other customers using this platform. So we'll develop cost per hour kind of programs for our customers. Uh, including performance-based logistics uh, that will support their needs, that will give them the predictability that they need and the peace of mind that they need so they can do what they do best, which is operate our aircraft as well. Uh, and then finally, training. We're at the, at the upper end of the totem pole uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of pilots, in terms of our crews. Uh, they make their way you know, sort of up through all the other aircraft. Uh, and if they're really good, they get to be one of these guys. And, they get to, and these, these guys, when they're really good, they get to train, essentially. So we're at the top of that, and we think there's a really good opportunity there. We're kind of transitioning from, call it an Ericsson Air Crane, to something more related to aerospace. And those are the four aerospace uh, pillars that we uh, intend to leverage. And we're excited about it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Udo, we are standing before a true legend in the rotorcraft community, the Ericsson Air Crane. A machine, and it is a machine. We're surrounded by helicopters. This is a machine. This is a vehicle that is used in a variety of roles, and even if somebody isn't very well versed with helicopters, most people recognize what this one is. If you would, tell me a little bit about how Ericsson Air Crane got its start in the industry. So Ericsson started as a uh, timber harvesting company uh, in California. Uh, they quickly recognized uh, that they could use a helicopter to extract the uh, timber you know, from the forest, and they quickly realized that uh, the air crane was the right helicopter. So they bought four of the, uh, at that time, uh, named uh, sky cranes from other sources. Uh, they also recognized that uh, there are tremendous benefits to owning uh, the type certificate, which allows them to uh, support the aircraft, but also build new aircraft. And so they purchased the type certificate from Sikorsky, and uh, in that process, the Skycrane name changed from Skycrane to Aircrane. Tell me a little bit about the future going forward for Ericsson Aircrane, and specifically the Aircrane helicopter. Right. So when I interviewed uh, about a year ago and when our owners decided to, to buy the company, I think we all saw the same thing. And that is tremendous uh, opportunity to, uh, it, to expand and to build on a foundation that, had, that has been built uh, over 37 years. And that's what we're excited about. We think there's uh, potential well beyond this foundation, but it's, it's critical to have that solid foundation, not to be starting from scratch. So our plan is to transition from Ericsson Air Crane to a much broader aerospace company. We have that capability and we have that potential and now with the, the leadership team that I introduced today, we'll be able to build on that foundation and have a much broader aerospace offering. You say building on the foundation of the current company. 
Does that mean building on the S64 foundation or possibly spinning it off in an entirely new direction? It will start being very focused on the 64 and on, uh, let's call it a next generation uh, 64. Uh, but at this stage, I wouldn't preclude, uh, especially in our operating areas, you know, addition of, uh, let's say, different platforms to, uh, to enhance and broaden our offering on the operations side. But to begin with, we'll, uh, we'll focus on the 64. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. Tell me a little bit about where you see the S64 going forward. What is the next step for this airframe? So this airframe uh, is, is also known as a flying Swiss Army knife. Uh, it has absolutely amazing capability, and we're building new capability you know, as we speak. So uh, with a global emphasis on, uh, on number one, on, on emergency response, on firefighting, uh, we think the demand uh, will be greater and greater in that arena, and that's its primary function. Let's call it over 70% of our business, I think, will be in, in, in those areas. So selling to governments, uh, countries that are emerging and uh, are finding uh, you know, a need for this kind of uh, equipment. Uh, but also, uh, many countries around the world are obviously, even in these times, investing in infrastructure. Uh, so that means uh, new power lines, that means new power towers, uh, that means new construction work, and uh, the air crane is a perfect, um, it's a workhorse, it's a perfect helicopter to meet those needs. Tell me a little bit about how the air crane became involved in the firefighting effort in Australia last month. Yeah, we have been uh, involved with Australia for many years, um, but I will say we, we, we got a very firm footing uh, back in early 2000 uh, when there were uh, devastating fires and uh, we had a helicopter uh, there, one of our cranes uh, named Elvis and uh, Elvis uh, came in uh, to that firefighting uh, scenario uh, and saved some firefighters that were cornered and uh, so with, with that public recognition in Australia uh, just uh, grew exponentially since then, when we've been an active part of uh, the uh, the firefighting campaign in Australia, and so uh, it's it's developed. It's a, uh, a mutually beneficial relationship, and and it's a very strong one. Now, in addition to the Ericsson Air Cranes, I believe your company also supports existing Sky Cranes in the business. Do you not? Yes, that's correct. Uh, we support uh, uh, over 40 uh, air cranes that are flying uh, throughout the world and we are actively taking a greater part in that support system, offering things like aftermarket support in terms of cost per hour kind of programs, performance-based logistics programs, and we'll do this so that those customers can do what they do best, which is fly the aircraft, operate the aircraft throughout the world, uh, and then uh, what we do very well is support those aircraft flying. Well, Udo, it sounds like we're dealing with an aircraft that not only is helping to literally build the world, but it's also helping to save bits and pieces of it at a time with its life-saving and firefighting efforts. Thank you very much for your efforts, sir, and good luck. Thank you for your time.